Coming up on New Media Tech. This week, I am actually on vacation, but I'm going to show you VisiWig, the multi-camera editing software that you run on your iPhone and your iPads. Right after this. It's time for another episode of New Media Tech, and yes, I am still on vacation. This has been pre-recorded uh, just for you, and this week, again, you're not going to see me uh, too much sitting here. I've actually already pre-recorded an episode on another app, uh, just like last week's show. Uh, this app is a little different uh, than last week. This one's more video related, and that's it's a very neat thing. I don't, not quite sure how it ever uses in the long term, but I can see on certain family events like birthday parties, this could be a pretty cool thing uh, for, for people to do. Uh, I'm not quite sure how we'd use it in necessarily the new media, but there's definitely a possibility there for it that I'm not seeing. So I did want to cover it. It's something that's uh, new and out and it allows you to edit the video, but you can do multi-camera shoots with it and stuff. So I thought it was kind of a, a neat thing to, to show. And the app is called VisiWig. So, um, this past weekend when I was down here working in the in Studio A, we're doing some remodeling in A, and we're doing some remodeling in Studio B in the other room. Uh, I had played with this on Friday and another app as well, and I decided I was going to sit down and record it. I kind of was sitting here working on stuff, and I thought, like, I just want to you know, get this out there. So all this week you're going to do is you're going to see me doing a little bit of an intro to it. I'm going to play the segment, and then I'm going to come back and uh, say goodbye. So uh, without further ado, here is VisiWig. Hi, it's Mike Myers, and I have another quick segment I want to record. And again, sorry, this is my day off, so I'm not dressed in my normal uh, collared shirt. I'm sitting down here working on, we're redecorating a little bit, uh, Studio A, and then we're going to move out to Studio B and uh, do some work out there as well. But I was working here working in Studio A today, and uh, I was playing some things last night and a little bit this morning, and some things I've heard about, and there, I kind of played them a little bit and got the concept of them. I just recorded the Joss Bach one, and also while I was here, I went and recorded another one called VisiWig, and this is um, an interesting way of recording multi-camera video using iPhones and iPads, any kind of iDevice that has a camera on it, and it actually is like a multi-camera shoot. Now, I actually have a subject here, but it's not warm. I was actually going to uh, use this lava lamp. Actually, I'm still going to use a lava lamp, I think, uh, as the subject, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I actually have uh, two phones, but one phone's like in this weird update state and I can't get to work. But I do have um, my iPhone and my iPad working. So the way it works is you have iPhone devices that are running VisiWig or iPad, iPad device, either one, and but one of them has to be in what's called stage mode, which is like the control mode. So I have my iPad in control mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, switch over to my iPad. So this is VisiWig. Now right now you see it's black because my case is closed. So I open my case up. You can see there's the lava lamp that I was going to use for my subject. And you see down at the at the bottom, sorry, I'm covering up the microphone as I'm talking, down at the bottom, Mike's iPhone, and that's the iPhone that's in my hand. And you can you can have, a, I think it's five devices that you can have on this. So what you're seeing basically is my iPad. Now we're in, getting ready to go in record mode. So I'm gonna hit record. And we're in record mode. And what you see is you're seeing my iPad moving right here. And if I wanna to switch to the iPhone image, You see right there, this is the iPhone, and you will notice that the picture quality is not really that good. That's okay. I was a little worried about that too. Uh, it actually is not bad when it's done. It's just, I guess, trying to save some bandwidth. So right now I'm looking at my iPhone. I can move my iPhone around. I can see the whole room. There's lights. There's teleprompter. So over here and you're seeing the green screen wall so you pretty much can move the camera around and I'm gonna set it back down just so I have my hands free 
and I can go back to the iPad now. And the iPad obviously has gotten better video because I'm using the iPad as the stage. So here's the iPad, and let's say I'm going to take and move this iPhone. Whoops, that got dark real quick. Over to the side like this, and you're gonna see the other iPhone, I'll switch back over. And now I'm recording the iPhone, so I'll move the iPhone around. We're on the iPhone, and now I'm going to go back to the iPad. So I'm basically doing a multi-camera shoot. I can do, I can set up the five, I think it's five or six different things, but I'm going to, go ahead and to stop it. And uh, now what you're going to see is that you're gonna see it's going to transfer the video. So Basically what it was doing during this time was um, marking where it switched from camera to camera. And it was showing me a rough, a very rough video of what the iPhone was doing. That's why it was so, um, it was like really low quality, basically. So what it's doing right now is it's transferring from the iPhone, the video that the iPhone itself recorded. And when it gets it into the iPad, which is the stage device, it will remake the video with um, the cuts that we had made during the actual uh, recording process. So um, while this is doing this, I'll come off of the iPad, come back over to me. So where would this be useful? Well, so many people, so many families have multiple iPhones, and you want to do a quick little multi-shoot movie or something with the kids. You know, the kids doing like. Uh, puppet show or some kind of little talent show or things like that. You could both have your wife and you have two different angles and somebody controls the angle or you could have three different angles and somebody controls the angle. Uh, the, the stage can be on um, the iPhone too. It doesn't have to be on the iPad. I just sit in the iPad because it's bigger. It's definitely easier on the iPad because it's a little bit bigger. Bigger. Um, you have, the trick is you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. You have to be able to see each other. And uh, I have found that's a little bit tricky, actually, to get to work a couple times now. Uh, even before I started recording here, I had a little bit of a problem, and I actually ended up, I think it was actually a, over a period of time, and actually saw each other, uh, because when I first brought them up, and I put the iPad in the stage mode, I told it to scan for more, and it didn't see anything. And as I was working with trying to get the other iPhone, which I couldn't get to work because it's in kind of a weird state, um, it, saw the other, it saw the other device. So it just took a little while. Um, so I think it's my impatientness that was uh, acting a little weird. So we st it still says we have, well, we're still transferring the video. I can go back over here and I can show you. And this is the part that's a little frustrating. It takes a little while sometimes to get this to transfer. But uh, it does transfer. And when it's done, it, it's actually pretty neat how it all, how it all works uh, between the eye devices. So um, I'm going to uh, skip over this part and we'll come back when it's done. All right, so what happened is it definitely took more than 103 seconds. I know it said it was going to take 103 seconds to do that, but it took a lot more than 103 seconds. At least it felt like a lot more than 103 seconds. So now that it has the video file from the other phone, um, it is going to now generate the clip. Now, one thing to remember when I played with this earlier, I used two phones and the iPad, and it did take a little bit longer to get the files down because it's different from both phones. Now, um, that being said, Part of my slowness here might have been the fact that in here I am running. Okay, now it's – I'm not quite, quite sure what the package is it's sending. I haven't figured that part of it out yet. But it did this to me before, too. It said downloading package. And it takes about as long to do that as it does to send the thing up. So it's going to take a while for that to happen. But um, – I forgot what was going on. Oh, part of my issue may be my, my Wi-Fi that I'm using is actually uh, quite a ways away and – I'm not my i my MacBook Pro is not plugged in, and it is controlling both the switcher and the soundboard, which is a very very active protocol. So it could just be it's taking longer because of that. Because yesterday it didn't take quite this long to do to do all this. Um, I'm not quite sure if I had a longer one or not. Now one of the things you're going to see at the top, which I can't really mess with right now, uh, with this package thing, but uh, at the top you see you can actually do a little bit of editing. You can put titles on it. And you can do transitions, things like that at the very top. You see little dotted lines at the top up there. Um, you can, you know, add titles to it and things like that, you know, real easily. Um, 
It's not a really strong editor. It's not like using iPhoto on the iPad, but it's not bad for what it is. And it outputs it as a video, so you could stick it in iPhoto anyways and do whatever you wanted to it as well. And uh, while we're waiting for this to do this, there's a couple things that uh, you might notice on the screen that on the right-hand side, you can see you can switch cameras, so you can do the front or back camera. And uh, you can see the time, and I'm not quite sure what sequential mode was. I think it was something to do with switching cameras sequentially uh, rather than uh -huh, dynamically. But I had to go back and play with that again. But yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty neat little program, especially considering you do it all with the iPhones. And uh, I don't remember what the program actually cost. Let me see if I can find that real quick. It was it was a little bit of money. All right, yeah, it is a little bit of money. The Vizzy Wig in the App Store is nineteen ninety nine, um, but you only got to buy it once. All right, we finally got the uh, video transfer, and let me just say, I took at least twenty minutes for it to do the whole package transfer and everything. So. While we're here, let's say you can come in and do titles and credits. So you can see fonts. Um, I'm actually going to do this funny intro thing. Uh, I've done this already. So, oops, add that. Um, just going to call our, our demo. Watching. So, because this is what it felt like. Watching paint. So I can type paint dry and I'm going to leave it at that. But you can see all the other things you can stick in here that would do. Um, all right. And you can't do a transition for text. I do remember that. Um, I'm going to fade to black. So if you have multiple videos now, you can take and you can edit things together here as well. Let's go ahead and watch it. Oh, now we're in edit mode. So I didn't go quite this far before. Um, but you can go and you can move things around. You can do some basic editing of the video. You can see it's only a minute and 43 long. But uh, let me go ahead. I'm just going to uh, save. Oh, here we go again. We're waiting. Oh, this is going much faster. We're already at twelve percent, so we'll just hang out. Because the last twenty minutes, through the magic of editing, I saved you some time and cut that stuff out. But this one's going to take about twenty seconds or so. So now it's actually outputting it, so they can watch it. So you can see you can do all this editing. I'm not quite sure what the package thing is that goes back and forth between. So I don't know exactly what all that is. I haven't figured that part of it out, but overall, it's still pretty neat. You can even do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and play it. And I don't have a sound to it, so, but if I did, you'd be able to hear me talking. I don't know if you'd be able to hear or not. So at this point, I'm in the iPad, and uh, there I switched to the iPhone. So you see the quality of the video looks much better after it switches to the iPhone after it's rendered than what it is um, when you're actually recording it. That was concerning me my first play. I was like, man, that video is horrible. I wouldn't want to ever use this, but um, it's not too bad, you know, after you get switched. So this is only a minute or so long, and then we'll, we'll let everybody go. So there you see me taking the iPhone uh, around the studio. And then I'll switch back to the iPad at some point. Now, uh, the one thing I, I kind of mentioned while we were waiting for this thing to, to transfer is on the, it only records in one direction. So, and it happens to be on my iPhone, and I guess that's what that's probably like this with all iPhones, is it you have to hold it the way the buttons are facing down. So when I set the iPhone down, it didn't set down straight. But if you had iPhone holders and stuff like that, it probably would be just fine. So here I am back on the iPad. You see I'm back on the iPad. So the video quality between the two isn't much different. It just looks that way whenever I am uh, watching it on the stage display. So there I'm back to the phone. See, that video looks good. 
And if the phone's sitting there, I'm picking it up, turning it around a little just to show you. So yeah, I mean, for, for doing this with iPhones, it's pretty amazing, actually. So, all right. That is VisiWig. And here you go. Oh, look. Produced in minutes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it didn't feel like minutes to me. It felt like many, many minutes. But yeah, there's the video. So you can see we do all these neat, you can do all these little neat things with it. Share it, all that stuff too. It's pretty neat for 19 bucks. And if your family has a bunch of iDevices, then um, this may be a quick way to do multi-camera video shoots. I mean, yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but after you're done with it, you just wait for it to finish and you can get through and do your editing. So yeah, I think it's pretty neat. I definitely think it's a neat thing. So that was my short, well, short for you, hopefully, kind of long for me while I was waiting for transfers, but my short little description of VisiWig. And this is for the new media tech show. All right, that was VisiWig. So kind of a neat concept, a multi-camera shoot with an iOS device, uh, and you, you can come back and uh, put it all into a movie now. As you noticed there, and I mentioned in the segment, that took a long time for those stuff to the transfer, and it was much shortened uh, because I shortened it down uh, in the edit process. Uh, and part of that, I think, is probably this room that's kind of dismantled and one Saturday. It's a little better now. Uh, we had one of the APs in this area uh, take, taken down, so it was using one that's a little bit farther away. I just think it was causing an issue. But uh, a very neat concept nonetheless. All right, that is going to be it for this show this week. A uh, few reminders again. If you can help us out by, uh, if you're on YouTube, giving us the like and then the share, even a good comment, uh, that be that definitely helps us out a lot. If you're in iTunes and watching us via iTunes, can you just go out and uh, do you give us a comment and a, and a rating out there? And that just helps us get our podcast found. And of course, the best way to get found is if you all forward it to your friends that are interested in this kind of stuff too. And that definitely helps grow the community as well. This show currently does not have a live recording night, a specified live recording night. We, I've been doing it uh, for the most part on Monday nights, but uh, it it kind of falls in where I can do it. I do release the new shows every Monday, uh, but I can fit in throughout the week. As I, if I find a co-host or when I, I say when I find a co-host, um, we'll probably set a more regular time. Uh, and uh, right now I'm just flexible because I have the, the ability to do that. So again, uh, the, our show notes page, you can get all the notes from uh, this show. If you go to techzen.tv and you can click on the new media tech show, you can also go to newmediatech.tv. That'll get you there as well. While you're there, you can uh, leave comments on each of the shows. You can go to our Facebook fan page. There's links there to all of our different uh, social media, Twitter, there, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you have ideas for future shows or you have questions, we'd love to hear them. There's a place where you can email us or you can also call us and leave a voicemail on our Google Voice number, and we will answer your questions in a future show. Uh, there's an email, like I said, there's an email there as well. And if you want to send us a video question or send us a video of your studio setup, uh, we'd love to see that. Just put it up on YouTube somewhere and send us a link and we'll show that on a future show as well. So uh, we definitely want to hear from you and that's definitely helpful for us. Uh, I think that's it for this week. Uh, I'm like I said, I'm still on vacation next week. I will be back. So we'll see you all next week. Oh, mm -hmm.